I'll be talking about diversify autocomplete. I my goal is to go through discuss some techniques to diversify search results, but bring them earlier in an earlier stage in the autocomplete. I also be sharing a real life project that I had a chance to work and apply uh, those techniques, and also I'll be sharing some results. I would like to start uh, talking about uh, Alex Group, it's the company I work for. Uh, we are a big group, like more than 20 brands, uh, classified brands worldwide. The numbers, uh, I think, tell by themselves. And I work particularly in this brand, OLX, which is one of the brands inside the group. And it's an online classified, some people call it also ad platform, in more than 25 countries. And then to start my, my talk, I'd like to share about like how is the OLX Europe uh, discovery cycle? How do we do it talk to the user in the discovery cycle? So we start everything with some many times with a home page and we have a search box where you can have the autocomplete, you can pick or not a suggestion for the autocomplete. You go to a search page. And you have like listings, which this in our case, they are ads. If you click in an ad, you go to an ad page. We have some recommendations at the bottom of the page. And all those steps generate interactions. And then you can use those interactions to push content to the user. For example, in the home feed on the home page. Uh, all those steps are very interconnected, right? But Users has different intents. It's not a prob problem only for OLX, but in commerce in general. And so what can break this dialogue with the user? If it is a conversation that we are having, what can break this conversation? And broad queries can break the autocomplete and search, uh, as Lev explained in his talk. Uh, and big which can break what I understand, bad interactions can break recommendations. And one of the things we believe, and we are going to discuss in the panel, is that diversifying search results can strengthen the dialogue with, with user. Uh, when dealing with broad queries and not complete in search, when you have like a, show, a showcase to show your items to new, for new and explorer users, also to getting, getting more information for to improve recommendations. And in my talk, I'm gonna focus on this problem of dealing with broad queries in the autocomplete. So that's the agenda that's gonna be covered. We are going to discuss a little bit the broad queries problem in the autocomplete. Uh, we're going to discuss some techniques to promote diversification. And this is the core of the talk, we can say. And we are going to have support for this use case, the autocomplete at OLX Europe. So let's get started. I think everybody knows what is an autocomplete, uh, type ahead feature. Uh, but I would like to highlight that I consider the route only a tool to talk directly to the user. And sometimes it's the first point of contact the user has of our search experience. Uh, and why is it important? Because it guides users to good queries, it helps the query understand, to understand better, it has this like fast response reaction. And if you do these three things uh, very well, I think you help you tackling search relevance earlier, early as possible, let's say. And uh, what is the autocomplete at, how is the autocomplete at OLX, our use case that we're gonna be using to explain everything. So we suggest popular search queries with categories. We, we kind of uh, have a, a popularity recipe similar to the one that Peter showed in his nice talk today. Uh, we cover, uh, we are not only suggest the popular queries, but also a category filter. If someone, a user pick that, oh, that's that category suggestion that go to a search page filtering by that category filter. We are, we also receive more than 50, 000, uh, 50 million requests per day. So it's a pretty impressive number. Uh, we cover 40% of total search and the ranks just by popularity and narrowness. Narrowness here is that if you have the chance to push for a more precise category, we do it. Sometimes most of the case looks good, but we have this traditional, broad, well-known, broad query problem, right? Let's say that you think about a Vespa, a scooter, a motorcycle, not a search engine. And I go to the autocomplete. I have this universe of scooters in my mind. And what actually, what is my intent when I type this? What if I have a Vespa and want some accessory 
like a helmet. What if I don't know anything about Vespa? Like anything about models? Am I ready for clicking one of these models? Another broad query effect. So this is an example that user goes and search for Gucci fashion brand. It's very common in all complete to receive a request to, for brands. And if I get all the results that I can return when I go to Alex and, and type of Gucci, I'm going to get, uh, and I get the categories of those results, I'm going to get this category hierarchy. I have a level one category, fashion, a level two category with different topics. Uh, and I have a level three with, with more specific stuff, uh, like sunglasses, wallets, handbags, other bags and accessories women, foodwear, and what you suggest today is like what is inside this box, which is very relevant, but look at how many things you could have suggested to the user. Consider these both examples. We have some breaks in our dialogue with user. Maybe we jump into premature conclusions, show very specific popular suggestions in the case of Vespa models, Maybe we, we could have asked more, maybe show more possibilities to, to autocomplete, uh, like uh, accessories. We could like, but that's the problem. Maybe we never have the chance to ask more because we have this popularity feedback loop. We suggest things that are popular, new content uh, or things that are not still popular, we don't suggest. So these things never get popular, right? So it's the famous rich get richer. And uh, diversify out complete. We believe that we can improve the user experience on those broad queries. Because with that, we can minimize the over, over specialization of some suggestions, like uh, give an overview of different available item categories, break this feedback loop, and refine the user query. Maybe showing all the user everything that's possible will help them to refine the query. So let's. Having that in mind, let's formalize our, our goal. In this experiment, this is like a real life project. What I wanted is diversify out complete uh, category suggestions for broad queries. A broad query is like what Lev explained, something that can uh, explain it, uh, can have multiple meanings or interpretations. But in our case, it's something that's also popular. We want to, we want to expand the autocomplete. We want to also uh, change queries that like the head queries, they, they have interaction, that they brings traffic to our website. Uh, and those queries has to contain categories with many search results. We don't want to put a new suggestion with a category that maybe shows like 1% of the root set. And those categories are not yet suggested. Okay, so how to apply diversification? I think this is like one of the things that this panel is about. Uh, my goal here is not like go through this question, answer this question, only share some research, some uh, techniques that I, I use it in this user case. And inspired from web search information retrieval, there was a nice paper from Professor Santos about this. There was something called explicit diversification in web search. It happens when you have a, 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 when you have a query or, or also known as the information needs. And this query has multiple interpretations. And you explicitly diversify. You, your goal is to increase the coverage, cover as many as possible uh, interpretations of that meaning that you can do. This is very good for broad queries. But the next question is, how can we measure coverage? Uh, again, it's like a, not an answer, it's like a, a methodology that I see that's very common I, by, based on the blog posts and research that I, I follow it, and it's a two-step methodology. The first step is very simple. What if you clear your documents into topics, right? Uh, topics here can be faces, aggregations, categories, colors, word embeddings, vectors. Uh, and the moment you do that, you have something like on the left here. You have the topics and you put the document inside the topic. I'm assuming here that I don't have overlapping, like one document, each document belongs only to one topic. But uh, when you do that, by the moment you have this, you can also derive a distribution. Uh, you, you 
who, when you do that, you have visibility of like you, in this case, you are more likely to return your result set, uh, a blue topic than a gray topic. So the, the second step is like measure the dispersion of this topic distribution, because you can have multiple distributions. If you have something like on the left, you know what to return. But if you have something more on the right, you have a better chance to return like a different topics. But how do you, if you are in the left or in the right? There was tools for doing that, like uh, Gini coefficient, for example, and uh, not covering here, but uh, Doug has a nice article about this for e-commerce, uh, channel entropy, which today was uh, very well introduced in his their amazing uh, talk, like from Yetro and Byron. And I want to only revisit the topic. Channel entropy, most of you guys really know, uh, measures the level of information in a probability distribution. So we have a distribution, random variable distributions here, three distributions. And let's say that the, the event is like pick a, a sweet fruit from distribution. So in distribution way, if you randomly pick any, any, many times you want a fruit from the distribution, you always get lemons. Assuming that lemon is not sweet, you have high knowledge about that. You never get like a, a sweet fruit distribution. Day. So you can say that you have low surprise. But if you go to B, you have 75% of chance of picking lemon and 25% of chance of picking orange. It's better, right? And C, you have 50% of pick, chance of picking a lemon, 25 uh, orange, and 25% of picking a uh, very sweet strawberry. So you can say that in, in C, you have high, high, a high surprise or higher uncertainty, uh, and some people, as some people say. But the question is how to quantify, how to put a number on this like surprise. And that when aware channel entropy comes to play. This is the formula for multi-class channel entropy. It's very simple. We have this P of Y with the probability of event that will happen. For example, in C, if you do that, apply this formula, we have like a, this 25% of chance of picking a strawberry and then you do the calculation for all the events that can happen and you have an entropy of 1.5. So higher the entropy, higher this level of uncertainty or diversity in the distribution. And how to do that for e-commerce? This is like exactly what like Eatro uh, mentioned in, in Baru in their talk. Uh, that methodology, you can have some category probability. So as the moment you cluster a document in any criteria here, let's assume that the clustering categories, you can have a category probability which like basically you get all the results that you have uh, in your result set and then you get like how many results falls in a certain category and you have the probability of have, having that category. For example, if I go to OLX and search for blues, I can have discs, I can have cars. This is like the probability of having it of this uh, category. You can, you can interpret this as like, well, it's a probability of the uh, return of intention uh, and, and the intention is that like his venue, his cars, his computers, and you have an entropy. But this is an absolute number. Uh, it makes sense if you compare to other distributions, for example. Like if I search for blue Vespa 125, I have a, a lower entropy because most likely my the intent that I'm gonna cover is like a motorcycle, I return a product, a net, in our case that's a motorcycle, or maybe some parts and accessories. Okay, but we can take, uh, we can view entropy from another perspective. This example is extracted from this paper, it's very nice. Uh, let's assume that now the exercise is this, you have buckets and you have letters. You have three buckets and you know how to calculate now the entropy of the bucket. And let's say that you randomly pick a letter from the bucket and the question is how many questions do you need to ask to find out what letter it is? I'd like to use as inspiration here this game, Akinator. I don't know how many of you guys know this game. It's very nice. You think about a character, a real life character or not. And this genie uh, is going to find out who you're thinking about it in, I don't know, 10 questions. And he used like decision trees and entropy to, to prune the trees and find out the answer. So here the, the question is simpler. It's like how many questions do you have to ask? Uh, in bucket one, it's very clear. We don't need to ask any questions, zero questions, because you always get A. But let's, let's take a look at bucket three. So this is our distribution. And you can organize 
a decision tree as follow to minimize the number of questions you can make. make. So we can say it's A or B, and, and, uh, and it's A, you ask one more question, and it's B, another question, the same way for C or D. So take a look, we have two questions on average for A or but this letter has like a, a different probability of happening. So if you, if you as need two, two questions for it letter, you can multiply by the probability and you arrive in these two questions. This is the most uh, diverse uh, uh, distribution, but bucket two is less diverse. We can do better than two questions because we have a chance of like returning it. So you can organize your decision tree based on this fact. So you can right away ask, is A one question? If it's not A, you can ask, is B? Okay, for B, two questions. And C, you need, and C or D, you need a 30 question. By organizing our decision tree like this and multiply by the probability of having it later, we have 1.75, which is better than two. So turns out that this number of questions is exactly the value of the entropy. So you can think entropy like this, how many effort I had to put to know more about the, my distribution, right? But let's come back to the autocomplete. So the question is on average, how many questions can you ask to make sure you cover all user intents? And that's assume that each suggestion we give in the autocomplete is a question we can make. It's like we have a conversation, the user is like, you drew on this or this or that. So it's suggestions on a question. So if you have a very specific uh, query, maybe you don't even have a suggestion to make because it's low entropy, like we don't need to ask, the user wants that. But for broad queries, we can ask any questions, but how many is any? How can you define those questions? Only to have a picture where I, I'm talking about it, like is the autocomplete, like it suggests a Bosco query. We're gonna calculate the entropy of each category in that suggestions. And then if you sum, the entropy of each suggestion, you're gonna have the total entropy, which measures the diversity of your complete in our example, like how many different questions you can make. But how to pick each suggestion? That's a challenge. Uh, let's go to the extreme first to try to understand this. In the extreme, we can have 10 different suggestions. I have 10 slots. In this extreme scenario, I have each category, maybe divides like my result set uh, equally, uniformly. So it's it category that's it a product has the and it category has a product of ten percent because it's uniform, and then you have this entropy, uh, thirty three. But let's take a look how entropy behaves. So here in this chart, this plot, we have on uh, axis axis like the probability of that of each category, like, and on y we have the entropy, right? So let's take a look at this thresholds, 10%. What, what, this, what does this mean? This means that I have a category and this category covers 10% of my result set. Maybe if you go uh, to the left, we don't want to include maybe this in the, in the autocomplete because it's too few results if the user pick that suggestion, unless it's very important, but it's very important, it's already there. We, are, we want to expand our autocomplete. On the other hand, something very, very, very specific. Globally, can be answered only in one few one intent, one one category. So we are talking about here narrow queries. So maybe you don't want this. So the, the key here is to pick something in this area. It's like uh, when it's above 33. And uh, let's do it. Uh, so this is the example, Guti, right? So as I had this that tree with letters, I can have this uh, with my category tree as well. Here I went into uh, level two. Um, but it works like this. I got like the watches in jewelry and this covers 56% of my result set for this query quality. And the entropy is pretty high. So if I add this in the autocomplete, probably I'm gonna increase the diversity, I'm gonna maximize the diversity and give more opportunities for users to find out 56% of my result set. Like on the other hand, like uh, notions, it's very more probability, probably I don't want to include. And uh, talk, talk about implementation, this is the experiment pipeline. So the goal was to expand the suggestion for broad queries. So first, we got all the autocomplete suggestions, the things that are already suggesting. We trigger that query without any filter. We got the result set. 
the entire result set and you calculate the level two category distribution. We we'll calculate the entropy of each of these uh, category distributions and you measure the entropy. When it was above this threshold, we elected this as a new suggestion. And you add in the autocomplete if it's not there yet. So for example, Gucci, this was before. The, uh, keep, keep in mind that we want to, this at least uh, in this experiment, we want to keep the query at this. We want to maximize, like if someone search for Gucci, we want to just uh, categories on good tea. Not we want to minimize the chance of have good good men, good bags, good for women. Because if the user want that, probably he can he can type that. Uh, so by doing this, running this uh, pipeline, we introduce uh, these new suggestions. Uh, but the question is like artificially introduced those suggestions there. What is the popularity? And this in this first iteration we enriched the popularity from the parent. So we got the parent, the popularity of fashion, and we use this, this popularity for these expansions. I couldn't miss the, the, the opportunity to show the example that all the search talks have, like if someone search for iPhone. <laughs> if someone search for iPhone today, we have only phones and tablets. With this, we're going to start suggesting accessories because accessories has a bunch of accessories in our inventory and they, they cover a lot of the results. So we explained it to accessories as well. OK, so this the, the last part of my talk. Uh, we have like uh, we run this in two countries, country one, country one and country two. And we expanded uh, less than 5% uh, of our, our suggestion queries because we, we only touched this broad queries uh, that didn't have enough uh, coverage yet. But this covers over 26% of total search for the first country and 17% of total search for the second country. And the experiment was to compare the performance of both groups. Uh, those that we've had the broad queries, those that we expanded against those that we didn't expand. And after doing that, we got some results. Uh, the first metric that I wanted to collect was a metric to measure, to make sure that I was affecting the autocomplete behavior. I didn't want to maybe introduce something there and then like, I want to know if the user ever actually picked that suggestion. I didn't want to introduce something there that nobody picks. So the first metric I calculated was the out-completed users should suggest search rate, which basically the number, the, the share of suggested search across total searches. Total search is like suggested search, keyword search, filtered search. And then what's the, the share? Like, uh, and I increased the share in the first country by 10%. In the second country, it was flat. This number was, was not significant. Another metric that I try, as I'm, I'm suggesting uh, search with category filters, I want to measure this filter rate. So, because a user pick a suggestion and go to the search page. And if it's not right, the filter is not right, probably the user has to redefine the filter and uh, in, the, in the search page. And I want to measure this rate, like how many, what is the rate? Like if a user has to filter less, maybe it's better. And some observations, diversification impacted user behavior and autocomplete, as you can see. C1 users interacted more, apparently, but did C2 users pick less suggestions but better ones because the filter rate was better. And to try to solve this question, also ask some business metrics. Uh, it's very hard to, to calculate business metrics for autocomplete because autocomplete is the beginning of the funnel, and then you have the search page, the filters, and then the go to the Add page in the add page, a user can send a, send a reply if he like it. The that this is the conversion rate for OLX, and and I measure two groups of uh, features like uh, query metrics. So here I measure the the CTR and the reply rate of uh, the, that query that expanded. Doesn't matter if the user pick or not my suggestion suggestion, and I got a lift in first country and not a downlift in the second country and flat results for reply rate. And I also calculate the, the performance of those things that I actually spent, the category. 
And it turns out that I got good results for both in both countries. So this I say it's promising. It's like a research, like I put in production, I collect the data, but still a research phase. It's promised for C1. And C2 might maybe replace it relevant suggestion that I couldn't replace, or the, the rank is the problem here. In both countries, new suggestion cat category look relevant. At least I, I suggest categories that like user interact with, engage it, and convert. Okay, to finish my uh, my talk, uh, this is a early stage experiment. Uh, so for the first and simple iteration, I want to extend this to affect more countries and more queries. And also I'm interested in studying all the impact in short and long term. And also to do that, I can maybe consider ranking, not the entire result set, but the top end results, explore more cluster uh, dimensions, and also define the better entropy and, and popularity thresholds. Because I, I hard coded the entropy and the popularity, and then this is like the, my estimated, like the prior, but over time, when I get more observations, maybe I can refine this and have my autocomplete self uh, diversify, fine, let's say. And that's it. Uh, thanks, guys.